I would, you know, they say the darkest hour is right before the dawn, and, and for, from a filmmaker's point of view, when you're dealing with that kind of story, I'm guessing that's like honey, because you, you can really get into the drama, you get into the, uh, the grit of what, what these people are going through. Yeah, we spend more time, obviously. We've got more time because we're splitting it across two movies, and um, there was something about taking them out into the big world, leaving Hogwarts behind, the notion that they're oddly iconic characters. I've spent five and a half years working with them, so for me, there's a... There's a there's a, there's a relation. I, I empathise so much with the characters and obviously the people who are playing with them. And I think for the millions of fans who love these characters, um, it, it becomes oddly compelling to see them in this very dark and dangerous world that feels much realer. When we're at Hogwarts, because it's a big, wonderful castle, even when there's jeopardy, it always feels sort of safe. But there's something more haunting about them being away from all of that. Uh, I was going to say, I've spoken with, with uh, Daniel and the guys for every film now, and I just looked over my notes, and from a few years ago, I just noticed Daniel saying that he got a text from JK as she was writing this book and said, she described it as a bizarre little road movie, and, and that notion that really, it's quite cinematic, because you've got car chases, you've got, you know, a shootout in a diner. I, I'm wondering, the, the, obviously from your point of view, that was a, a real plus, but I, I kind of have the suspicion that JK was even thinking, you know, in, in cinematic terms as, as the books progressed. Uh, I I'm, I'm don't know if you felt that with this one in particular. It's funny, I, when I read um, uh, the seventh book more than any of them, I felt read like a movie in a strange way. To begin with, certainly the beginning, it was really intriguing. Um, you know, with the chase in the sky and the sidecar and everything. It felt really sort of more, sort of, yeah, it felt very f filmic. But there are filmic things in every one of the books, obviously. Um, they're, st they're so stuffed full of things that you could, you could sort of go in and choose. It's a, it's a very rich source, basically. The opening scene, Voldemort gathering, the gathering, it's almost like a BAFTA's Lifetime Achievement Award dinner. We've got all these incredibly yeah. well-regarded British and Irish and, and, and you know, UK actors gathered around the table. Who, who decides on the casting? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's almost, who do you leave out? Because, you know, I don't know if Dame Judi Dench feels a bit sniffy that she hasn't been asked to be in one of the Hot Harry Potter movies. Well, how, does it, how is it sort of, you know, chosen? Is there a, a case of, you know, we've such a rich body to pick from, you know, who do we say this for? Um, well, it's, it's already been so well populated and um, you just go with your gut, basically. I mean, I, I, I always wanted Imelda for... Um, Dolores Umbridge, because there's just something wonderful about the scale of Imelda, mm. and um, she's got that wonderful ability to play funny, but do things which are really interesting inside. And and I've worked with Bill Nye before, and I always wanted to get Bill into the movies, and I almost got him into Half Blood Prince, but we cut that scene basically. Wow. And then when Scrimmager popped up in Hallows, I phoned him up and said, "Bill, we're on," <laughs> basically. And because um, I'm a huge fan of his, and and yeah, but it is remarkable. We're very lucky. It's so smashing to have that level of talent. It's a real, you know, it's a you get the younger actors who are so enthusiastic and curious, and ambitious and passionate about what they do, and then you get this wonderful layer of acting aristocracy who are you know, incredibly experienced and require a whole, from a director's point of view, require a whole different level of management and and sort of um, engagement. And th that's what's been really fun about the films for me is working, you know, it's sort of working two different muscles in a way when you work with those. Two. And the younger actors always are the ones that I really love working with because they're they're fabby, you know. But you do know the next major gathering, Dench is going to give you a headbutt. You should Probably. Be ready for that. Yeah, I'm expecting it, mate. Good, Listen, okay. I'm, Just once you're ready, you'll, you'll be easier on the head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, nice son. To